Hi there, thanks so much for joining me. In today's video, I'll be talking about the four most useful tools you can use to increase the quality of your practice time in between lessons. We spend the majority of time with our instrument without our private teacher in the room, so it's important to grow the skill of being our own best teacher. Luckily, there are plenty of tools to help us along the way. By the way, none of these are oboe specific, so feel free to continue watching if you're an instrumentalist of any sort. To those who don't know me, hi, I'm Ron, and I post oboe videos every single week. I wanna encourage you to like this video and to subscribe to my channel for more oboe content and so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I usually talk about these tools in the first or second lesson with a new student, depending on their level, to make sure they really make the most of their time in between lessons, and in turn, get the most out of their lessons. The first tool is the metronome. The metronome truly is your best friend. The ideal way to use the metronome is, first of all, to make sure you're really playing along with it. A lot of times I'll hear students who are kind of approximating the way that they're playing with the metronome. You should feel like you are so together with the metronome on the beat that so you almost can't even hear it because it is so lined up with the start of your notes. Secondly, make sure that you're not just relying on the metronome for the pulse. The metronome is helping keep you accountable to the pulse that you are creating internally and correcting when you are rushing or dragging. If you're just relying on the metronome for the pulse, then you are robbing yourself of the chance to build a great internal metronome. Having great time makes you a musician that colleagues just love to play with and in an audition situation is the most objective criteria that we get assessed on. The next tool I wanna to talk about is the tuner. The nice thing about a tuner is that it will keep you in the ballpark of where a certain pitch should be. You should still be aware of different chords and their tuning properties. For example, in a major chord, the third should be sitting a little low. In a minor chord, the third should be sitting a little bit high. The tuner is a good check and balance to make sure that you're not wildly off. Our general range of intonation is extremely important to keep in line so that we can be better colleagues and play in tune with others. Just like I said about the metronome, you have to make sure that you're not just relying on the tuner, you're using it to help build your listening skills. For woodwind instruments in particular, each note might have a different tendency, so a tuner can help you recognize these tendencies so you can adjust for them easily on the fly. Additionally, you can use the drone feature on your tuner to help improve your listening ability and make sure you're not just using the visual reference on the tuner. I use the app Tunable, which I've recommended in the past in my vibrato tutorial video. I'm still not sponsored by the way, just a big fan. The third tool is the mirror. I think that you should be practicing in front of a mirror as much as you can. There's so much to be gained from looking at your reflection. What does your posture look like? What are your fingers doing? Are they flying off the keys? Are your shoulders tense or relaxed? As a wind player, looking at our embouchure and making sure that it looks good and we're not overworking is essential. There's so many problems you can spot early and address when you're practicing in front of the mirror. The final tool is a recording device of some sort. If you're still pretty new in the game, you can use your phone or a tablet for this task. But once you've been playing for a couple of years and you're starting to take yourself seriously, you can consider picking up something like the Zoom H2N or H4N. Recording yourself is absolutely critical for improving. When we practice performing, we can't also be analyzing because our mental chatter gets in the way of the piece. Recording devices free us from having to analyze and store information at the same time that we're trying to think about the big picture and actually deliver the performance. You can set up your recorder, play your heart out, and then listen back and analyze what went right and what you can fix. I recommend listening back a few times and taking notes about different aspects like intonation, time, rhythm, phrasing, etc. I know that a lot of people's first reaction when listening to themselves can be shocking and maybe demoralizing because the recording may not be as good as you imagine yourself sounding. This is actually a good thing because you can slowly and methodically narrow the gap between what you sound like on the recording and what you'd like to sound like in your imagination. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope this was very helpful to you. Good luck on your oboe journey and let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want me to cover in a future video. Please subscribe and hit that thumbs up button below. It is much appreciated. Additionally, if you're on Instagram, you can find me there at oboron and feel free to like my Facebook page as well. 
Have a good day.